welcome to the Creative Visionaries podcast. My name is Tori Barker, a digital marketing specialist, business owner, mom, and you guessed it, a creative visionary. This podcast is about inspiring business owners, building connections, sharing success stories, and motivating others. Join me on this journey as we tap into your true potential and unleash your inner visionary. Hello, hello. Welcome back to the Creative Visionaries podcast. Today, I am super excited to introduce you to a guest who is the CEO of Client Attraction Pros, an international keynote speaker, a podcast host, video SEO master, and also known as the content superman, Atiba D'Souza. Hey, 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 what's up? What's up? So so good to see you, by the way. Yes, it is great to see you. We haven't, you know, it's been a couple months since we've seen each other. And luckily, we have met in person. So it's not our, you know, as you would call it, first date virtually through a podcast. (laughs) That's right. So I'm glad that we at least have that established connection beforehand. Yes. So tell us a little bit more about you and how you got into this space where you are now and tell us about your Superman hat too. Ooh, okay. Um, Let's start at the end and work backwards then from the questions that you asked. Cool? That sounds great. All right. So um, one of the things that not a whole lot of people know about me is I coach football. Um, I know you know that because we've talked about it. Yes, sir. Um, but but I coach football and I've coached football for a long time at a, at a high level, um, both youth and high school teams. Um, and about eight, nine years or so ago, I took over this uh, high school team and I was on my way to practice for the very first day, very first practice. Uh, um, and I realized that I had left my hat at home. Now, football practice is in the summertime. Football practice is three hours outside. This was in the days when we could still do two a day. So it was six hours outside in the sun, beating down on you. And I didn't have a hat. Well, I pulled over into a local Walmart and walked in and said, I got to find a hat. And I walked into their hat section and they had a bucket hat and it was a Superman bucket hat. And I said, well, I wanted to get a bucket hat. Wasn't sure about Superman, but I was like, all right, whatever. And so I bought this hat. And I wore it to practice, and then it stayed in the car, and I kept wearing it to practice. (laughs) And the Superman thing kind of caught on, and the kids started buying me Superman hats. (laughs) And that started the collection of Superman hats that's now grown to over 100 hats. I love that. Which is absolutely (laughs) insane, according to my wife. (laughs) Um, But... (laughs) But the, the thing that I share with people all the time, because people always say, you know, you, you wear all the hats and blah, 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 blah. It's not about me. The hats aren't, aren't about me. And it's not about a statement that I am so great and I'm, I am the Superman. Because quite honestly, when I wear this hat, I cannot see this S. The S is for you. My goal in life is to help you bring out the superhero in you. That's what I'm here for. That's why I still wear the hats. It's the perspective, right? Like you said, you can't see it, but it's what other people see. And I love that. Yes. So that's why the hats. Now, how did I get to here to be able to tell you about a Superman hat collection? Well, it all started in 1996. Uh, Me and two friends sat in my mother's basement because, you know, that's where all geniuses have the best ideas. Okay. Um, (laughs) Sitting in my mother's basement, we were faced with a problem. And we solved that problem by creating a search engine. Yeah. In 1996, me and two friends wrote a search engine. because. We had too many bookmarks and we couldn't find stuff and we needed a better way to search the websites that we were bookmarking in 1996. Awesome. Yep. That's where it all started. We took that search engine and we sold it to a couple of clients um, and we made a whopping $2,000. <laughs> big money, big money. And we thought we were, we were it until, until Yahoo sold for several million dollars and we realized we were small potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, we took that and, and then started doing um, government contracting and government consulting um, and building search systems for the government, for DLA, INS, EPA, um, IRS, uh, the, the, the Army, 
lots of major government systems, we built search systems for them between 2000 and 2005. Um, left government in 2005 and government contracting and went back into the private sector right around that time when Google was having a problem. And for those of you who are old enough to remember this, the problem that Google was having between 2005 and 2007 was there were a bunch of savvy marketers that had figured out how to spam page one of Google and have trashy content end up on the top of page one. Mm. Google wasn't happy about that and they needed a solution. Well, we had written search engines from the inside out. We knew the problem because we had faced the same problem in the government. We had faced the same problem in other search systems that we had had written. And, and we said, well, it, here's how we thought about solving the problem. Google's probably going to think about solving the problem in the same way. And we said, so business owners, and this is what we literally did. We went to our clients and we said, hey, they're going to solve the problem in this way. Mm -hmm. That means they're going to need content that actually will resolve the problem for them. And, and they would want to rank on page one over all of this other content. Let us help you create that content. Let us come up with a strategy to help you create that content. And that's what we did. Um, we got really, really, really great at it and really great results that, you know, tons and tons of pages ranking on page one of Google and driving tons of traffic um, for our clients. And we did that literally 2007 through about 2020. Um, then 2019, I was tired and I was burnt out and I was ready to quit. And then something happened in 2020. Uh, mm. I, I forget what it was now. Maybe some of y'all might remember. I don't know. Um, something happened major in 2020. I forget. <laughs> Nobody remembers. I'm in perspective to stop and, and um, I, I picked up Sean Cannell's book on YouTube, number one bestselling book on YouTube. And I started reading the book and I, and I was reading Sean's book. And as I was reading Sean's book, I realized that Sean was using the exact same model for content that we were for written content he was using it for video content oh. and then i remember that we'd written a paper in, in 2018 about how video was the future of marketing but we couldn't find a client willing to pay for the experiments to prove it right, right? and then i'm sitting there in 2020 reading this and i'm like holy crap this is what we've been doing and we had this spec that said the video was the future I wonder if we can make this work. And so we went into R&D for a year and a half mm. to figure out how we can turn what we had been doing for 13 years for written into video. And that's what got me to this place today where we've literally figured out how to rank videos that you create and post on YouTube on page one of Google. Wow. I'm impressed. I'm like... <laughs> Thank you. I mean, I know, I know this about you, so I'm, I, I'm not sure why I'm surprised, but I'm impressed by hearing your story. And you know, video marketing is is hugely important. Obviously, we all know that. I'm curious how. So, can anybody just create video content and it'll rank, or what's the secret sauce that makes it so unique and so um, you know responsive to a Google search? Yeah, that's a great question, and the answer to the question is yes. Anyone can do this. The problem is you're not going to. And I know you're listening to me right now and you're, in, and you're one of those. You're not going to. So just stop listening right now because you're wasting your time. I'm just, I'm just going to be, be honest with you, listener, right now. But there's some of you who are listening and you're saying, you know what, Tori, I'm glad you asked that question because I want to know because I'm going to do it. And I'm, so I'm talking to you right now. Mm -hmm. right? Sorry to divide the audience in that way, but, but we're here for action takers. And that's one of the things I know and love about Tori. We're here for action takers, right? So let's talk about taking some action now. Yeah. Here's what you've got to do. Here's what you've got to do. And, and here is the key. It is so freaking simple that when I'm done saying this, you're going to say, that's it. I guarantee <laughs> you, you're going to say, that's it. And I'm going to say, yes, that's it. Okay. <laughs> yes, that's it. Here's what you've got to do. Your customers ask you questions before they buy from you. I know it because they're customers and that's what they do. When they do, you're going to answer that question in a video. Then you're going to take the title of the video and make it the exact question your customer asked you. And you're going to post that on YouTube. You say, that's it? Yeah. 
So Matthew, I don't know if you, you might even know Matthew, Matthew uh, Gill Gilligley. Um, I don't know if you know Matthew or not, uh -uh. but Matthew heard me say this in, in a group setting about two months ago, maybe a little bit more than two months ago. And he said, is that it? And I said, yeah, that's it. And I didn't think anything of it. Then a month ago, I'm in line um, at an event and Matthew comes up to me and he's like, dude, you know, you said this a month ago and last week I created a video and I posted it on Monday and on Tuesday, I, I, I just did what you said. And on Tuesday, it was number four on Google. <laughs> he said, dude, how'd that happen? And today's Thursday. How did that happen? <laughs> right? And then now I did give Matthew a little bit more information in that talk that I did. And I'm sure that with you now too, which is the caption of your video. Go ahead and repeat the question in the first two sentences of the caption of your video. Then in the rest of the caption, talk about whatever else you talked about in the video. Like literally repeat yourself in the caption. Okay. So Matthew did the first piece and he put the, the question as a title. Yeah. And he ended up number four on Google in one day. Matthew then called me two weeks ago. Actually, he wasn't called. He, he sent me a, a message on Slack two weeks ago. And the message said, dude, this time I did exactly what you said. And I put the, 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 the title to be the question. And then I repeated it in the caption. And I posted the video. And three hours later, I was number one on Google. Wow. You want to say, well, yeah, Matthew probably has some massive YouTube channel. Matthew doesn't even have 100 subscribers yet. <laughs> so why is that so important? What What is that? the secret sauce in that? Like, I mean, it's, it's, I know people are searching for certain keywords and mm -hmm. terms. Is that what it is? Is the repeatability, the questions that people are asking and you're solving that question for them? Yeah. And it, it boils down to one word, Tori. And that one word is intent. Mm. See, Google is the biggest intent search engine in the world. It's the biggest intent platform in the world. Nobody goes to Google and just says, eh, I don't know what I want. It's not like browsing through Netflix. True. You go to Google because there is something you're looking for. You have intent. And when you have intent, okay, you have intent because you had a problem that you're trying to solve. As humans, when we have a problem we're trying to solve, we do one out of two things. We either clam up and shut down, which doesn't solve our problem, or we ask a question to help us solve that problem. So if we ask the question and you happen to be the one to answer that question, what is Google going to do? They're going to say, hey, our customer is asking a question. They answered the question. Let's marry them together. That's Google's entire point. Yeah. Do you ever advise like uh, pre-searching for that question to see what the searchability is? Because I know that you can do keyword planning, you know, search, like what's the relevancy? Is that even important or just, you know, move on with the question and, 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 and being a video. So if you're just starting out, it's not important. If you've been doing this for a while, it becomes more important. Right. Okay. Um, but if you're just starting out, the key is start. Yeah. Get the barriers out of your way and just start. Start, start, start. Let me say it one more time because I don't think you heard it. Start. Yes. Okay? Start fact, and keep going. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break this down for you because, and Tori, this doesn't quite answer your question, so I'm sorry. But I, no, I, no, I, no, you're I'm fine. Sort of now. Um, I, I'm going to break this down for you because the next question that someone's going to say is, oh, yeah, you said start, but how do I start? So I'm going to tell you exactly how you start. Okay? You all ready? All right, here we go. You're going to close your eyes right now. And you're going to imagine the last time you had a conversation with your customer. And you're going to think, what was the question that they asked me? And in that moment, the question will come back to you. And you're going to take that question that they asked, and you're just going to jot it down on a piece of paper. Okay, I've got the question. Once you have that, you're going to pull out this little thing here, which I guarantee you have one of. We all have a phone. And if your, yours broke yesterday, believe me, you're going to buy a new one today or tomorrow. <laughs> For sure. Okay. You've got one of these, this phone. You're going to pull out this phone. You're going to turn it on. 
when you turn it on, there's an app on this phone. Most times it's red and it has this little funny thing inside that looks like a camera. You're going to press that app. When you press that app, can y'all see that on the screen there? When you press that app, there's you. going to be a circle with a red dot usually on the inside of it, okay? And it's going to say video. It may say photo. If it says photo, click on the one that says video. And you can see that red, that white circle with the red dot on the inside of it. You're going to take that phone and you're going to put it in front of your face and you're going to press that red dot. And when you press that red dot, you're going to say, today I'm going to answer this question, blah, 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 blah. You're going to say what the question is. And then my friend, you're going to answer the question just like if a customer had asked you the question. Nothing fancy, just the way the customer would have asked you and what you would have said to them, that's what you're going to say. When you're done with the answer, you're going to press the red dot again. That's going to stop the video. Now, this is the most important part. Oh, yes. This is the most, this next step is the most important part. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. As soon as you press that red button, as soon as you press that red button to stop, I want you to go to the all apps on your phone, however that looks, okay? Then near the end of your all apps will be this one app that I know you already have. It's called YouTube. You're going to open that app called YouTube. And at the bottom of the screen, it's going to be a circle with a plus sign in it. You're going to press that circle with a plus sign. It's going to open a menu. And the second option on the menu is upload a video. You need to click that. It will show you the video you just created. You will select the video. It will ask you for a title for the video. The title will be the question that you answered. And then you're going to click upload. Mm -hmm. So when I say start, that's what I mean. That's it? No. <laughs> you're so right. I mean, that's the biggest thing is is starting, right? And and like you said, the most important step after you record that video, you actually have to upload it. Because I can't tell you how many times I've recorded a video. I'm like, eh, no, I'm not going to upload that one. You know, maybe my hair looked weird. I didn't sound right. <laughs> but you got to get past that, right? You just have to yeah. upload the video. Yeah. And the reality is this, my friends. Okay. Um, the reality is this, if your customer calls you or comes into your office or what or, or your store from whatever it is, if you're talking to your customer, you're on a zoom and they ask you a question, you're not going to get up and go to the bathroom and check your hair. True. You're Maybe. just going to answer the question. Okay. If you stumble over the words, when you said it, you'll do what you'll just clean it up and you would have answered the question. It's no different here. You're just talking to your customer. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that you have to realize. You're just talking to your customer. And the thing that they want is they want the authentic you. They want to connect with you. They're not looking for a TV commercial. See, one of the problems that you have right now as you're listening to me and you're thinking about this is you're thinking about somebody else mm -hmm. on TV or on YouTube or on some platform that has millions of dollars of camera equipment and you're comparing yourself to them. They're doing a whole massive production. Guess what? Your customer doesn't care about that. Yeah. The customer cares about you. The customer wants to connect with you. So you have no business, no right, no purpose in connecting or comparing yourself to them. Don't do it. Don't do it. The only thing you're doing is hurting yourself when you do that. Yeah. Absolutely right. For sure. Yeah, I think, you know, beyond just just pulling out the phone and getting started, it's, you know, uh, establishing authority for yourself too. it helps you build confidence, right? Um, and you're authentic and your clients see that. And um, yeah, I think, like you said, it's just answering the questions. And, and a lot of times that's, that's the missing piece is that people when they want to do video they think too far in advance like oh i have to have that equipment and i have to you know do it the right way and i have to produce it and this and that but when it comes down to the simplicity of it what's yeah. the content that the client is looking for right the answer to the question that they have they don't care if you have the lights they don't care if you have the studio <laughs> they no. just want to know if you can help them and if you can answer the question that they have yeah so, no so. 
because they're not coming to you because they want to buy video production. Yes, yeah, true. Uh, okay, true. I get it. If they were coming to you because of video production, then sure, maybe your video needs to look good. But they're not. Yeah. So they're not judging you on your video production. Mm-hmm. Now, right? is is there any uh, importance to frequency when mm. it comes to video or um tell me about that what's the frequency that that you should yeah. maintain there's maintain? more importance to consistency than mm. frequency okay um because if you do three a day and then take a week off you just wasted your time right right the algorithms favor consistency so if you know i can only do one a week then do that do that. Be consistent. You know, Monday at, at 10, there'll be a new video, right? Be consistent. Yeah. And then it's, it's a matter of um, cross promotion too, right? I would assume, you know, take that video and share it on social media, right? So that you can yes. expand your exposure on other platforms and get that message across on not only YouTube, but, you know, to your actual clients who you're connected with on social media. Yeah, so this is a really big point. Um, and so I'm glad you brought it up. Uh, we deal with this a lot, okay? Um, and the thing that people are facing and, and, and that I know you're facing is the reality that, you know, you, you've heard an expert say, you gotta be on every single platform and you gotta be everywhere and you gotta do everything and you gotta, and you gotta, you gotta, and you're like, dude, I'm running a business. I ain't got time for that. Like, what are you talking about? Like, who does that? Right? And I get it. I 100% get it. And so here's the advice that we give to all of our clients. Number one, YouTube is king. Everything must go to YouTube. Everything must go to YouTube. Let me rephrase that. Everything must go to YouTube. Okay? That's number one. Number two, as we start to, and we don't use the word repurpose, that's a four letter word around here, but we can explain <laughs> that. Um, sorry, we, sorry, my friend. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. We use the word splintering because there's an intelligence in splintering than repurposing. Re repurposing is mindless. Oh, I'm just cutting it up in terms of what sounds good. Splintering, we're, what we're talking about is, is creating new content based on what the customer wants. Mm. Different More process. Of a strategic approach, right? Very strategic. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not about being cool. It's about being useful. Yeah. Let me say that again. It's not about being cool. It's about being useful. Okay. And so when you splinter out your content, yes, you want to send it out to multiple platforms, right? We do tell our clients, you have to be on every single platform, but you only have to focus on one. Yeah. So we send everything to YouTube and then you figure out where your customers actually are the most. They're on LinkedIn, great, focus on LinkedIn. That's the only platform where you're gonna go engage. They're on Instagram, great, go engage with them on Instagram. What we're going to do though is on LinkedIn, on Instagram, on TikTok, we're gonna send all of the same content. We're gonna send the exact same content to all of them. You're gonna focus on one and send the same content to all of them. People are gonna ask why, why, why do that? It's called proof of life. Mm -hmm. It's called proof of life. One of the things that came out of, of the 2020s, the pandemic, is lots of businesses that still had websites, that still had internet presences, but they were long gone out of business. By sending content, that even if it's the same content to all those different platforms, you're sending proof of life signals. So if I am a TikTok guy, and that's where I go, and I go look you up on TikTok. I say, oh, it is. They, they do exist. They posted something just last week. Boom. They posted something yesterday. Boom. They're they're still in business. Yeah. So whatever platform I love, you are there. Even though you're not engaging, you've given me proof of life signals. That's why you have to be everywhere. 100%. You know where I'm going to go. Yeah. Now, let me ask you this. So when you say it has to live in YouTube, I totally get that but you also need to have that same content on the social platforms. Is there a uh, method? Do you share the link from YouTube or do you upload a, a nat or a native video to those platforms? What's the best strategy in that approach? 
It's a great question. Um, every platform is jealous. Insanely, insanely, insanely jealous. Because they're all fighting for the same thing, which is they want to master your eyeballs. They want your eyeball on their platform as long as possible. So the thing they don't want you doing is leaving the platform. So the thing that they will never reward is someone who entices someone to leave the platform. Let that sink in for a moment, folks. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So now what does that mean? That does mean that now when we're splintering content, we're creating new content. And that's what we're putting on other platforms as native con content for those platforms. Yeah. Okay. Super, super important. I think that's a lot of what people miss too, is they think I've already done it on YouTube. So I'm just going to copy this link and I'm just going to put it up, uh, up on, you know, Facebook or whatever, and I'm good to go. But there's so many repercussions, like you said, because each platform wants to keep you on their platform. It's like, like your website, you know, you, when you send somebody to your website, you want them to stay on your website. You don't want them yeah. to get there and go somewhere else. So it's, it's hugely important to have that, that native uh, content on the platform. And I love the, the term splinter because you're right. It is much more of a strategic approach um, and really thoughtful in how you share your content. So, no, ab yeah, absolutely. You know, you don't um, give you an analogy for this. Once you figure out how to get the girl to fall in love with you, you don't go tell everybody what the secret is. <laughs> right. Right. And that's tantamount to you posting your link on Facebook and for, for YouTube. Facebook's not gonna like that. They don't want that. They don't want they, they don't want that. YouTube yeah. doesn't want that. Yeah. Like that. So anyway. <laughs> well, let's let's shift to to this question because I think this is probably something that other the people who are listening might be thinking is let's talk about organic versus paid. So mm. can you still achieve the exposure through organic video? Oh, heck yeah. Okay. I mean, if, if you couldn't, I'd be out of job. <laughs> <laughs> we are 100% organic. Okay. Now, I want to be clear on this. I am not against paid. Paid is also important in a strategy, in an overall strategy. Organic, you can't rely on organic only. You can't rely on paid only. True. There is balance that has to be struck. Let me say it again. There is balance that has to be struck. Okay? And you have to find that balance. Um, the organic world is booming right now because of some of the issues going on in the paid world. Mm -hmm. But that's not the real secret sauce. That's what, you know, a bunch of people are paying attention to, but that's not the big deal of what's happening. So I'm going to share with y'all something that's a really big deal that's happening right now and why organic, especially organic video, is about to explode in a way that you cannot fathom that if, if you take my advice, you will outpace your competition over the next 10 years and they won't be able to catch up to you. They won't, mm. they won't. Let me tell you why. Yeah, and I've got a video coming out about this next week actually. Um, but there's a war that's at foot and nobody even realizes it. There is a war that's going to happen over the next three to five years between Google and TikTok. Interesting. Here's what's happening. TikTok captured the eyeballs of all the babies, all the little kids, right? Um, and all across the globe, mind you. And it was fun. It was cool. They danced. They laughed. They joked. And, and it, was, it was this crazy platform. Sure. TikTok created itself as an entertainment platform. They wanted to entertain. They've done a really great job of that. In 2022, TikTok decided it's time to change and grow up. And they have changed to become a search engine. Ooh. 
Who's that competing against, right? <laughs> now, couple that, exactly. Couple that with the fact that for a five-day period in 2022, TikTok was the number one website in the world. Well, I bet Google didn't like that. And you say, oh, but it's only five days. But guess what? No one had challenged Google in, what, a decade? Right. So you've got an upstart, quote unquote, who has now challenged Goliath. Mm. Let's take it further. TikTok is a 100% video platform. Let's take it further. Let's take it further. Okay. Through the pandemic, we as humans had a choice. We sat at home and we picked up these devices and we could either read or we could watch. Mm. And hands down, across the globe, we chose to watch. Yep. And so we sped up the video marketing revolution through the pandemic. We sped it up. We sped it up. And then there was this rise of this thing called TikTok, who now wants to become a search engine. All the while, Google launched shorts. And right. Google poured $800 million into shorts in 22. All the while, get this, get this, in 21, Google reclassified 60% of its database to be video first content. Interesting. Saying, we want to show video at the top of search before written for all of these keywords. Hence the reason you need to pick up your phone and start recording. <laughs> so we have an arms race going on. We have an arms race going on because Google wants to win the war of video. TikTok is in the lead for the war of video. Google believes that they have major advantage because of their history. They do. Okay. They do. TikTok is saying, well, we've got the eyeballs of the younger generation and we can keep them for longer and they're going to be the future. They're going to be the ones with the purchasing power. You're about to see a major war. Now, let's think about this for a moment. And I'm not advocating war. I hate war. I'm not advocating war. But in the real world, in the physical world, not the cyber world, when there is a war between two countries, certain industries do better than others. Mm. And one of those industries is anyone who's producing ammunition. If you're producing ammo, you're going to be in luck because both sides need you. True. And they're going to pay through the nose for it because they want to win the war. Mm -hmm. Let's come into the cyber reality for a moment between Google and YouTube. Sorry, between Google and TikTok who are having a war over video. So what's the ammo? The ammo is video. Uh -huh. And who's creating that video? Who's the producer? Who's the manufacturer of the ammunition that both of them need in order to win the war? You, my friend. Uh, for sure. So from an organic standpoint, we're about to see promotion of organic videos between Google and TikTok like we've never seen before because they need eyeballs. They need content and they need people to consume that content. So they're going to do whatever they can to get people to create and consume content. If you're a creator, which is what you need to be right now, you have a major opportunity at your hand, major opportunity. And you can outpace your competition faster than at any other point in time in your entire business's existence. I guarantee you that right now. That's why you got to create video. I love that. Drop the mic, Atiba. <laughs> well, you know, I, I don't think we can top that. So it's like, you know, where do you go from here? <laughs> so, okay. So you, you've given us some some major nuggets here. You've given us some insight. You've given us, you know, the step-by-step. -step. Now, 
Any final words for somebody who has any objection to this? So what's your final words for anyone who says, maybe it's not for me? Get over yourself or die. Yep. Like, seriously, no joke. It's never been cheaper, less expensive to produce video and have it rank organically than it is right now. And every day gets more expensive. True. And I tell you that because in my business right now, I've been literally all over the globe talking about this. And in my business right now, people tell me all the time, no one else is doing this like you're doing it. That's good for me. Okay. But guess what? Guess what? It's only a matter of time. Right. It's going to get more expensive. People are going to catch on. Yep. And at that point, you're going to be paying more. You can get in for pennies on the dollar right now. Look, I know Bitcoin is down right now, but I, I, was, I, I was talking to a friend of mine the other day who um, heard about Bitcoin when it was super early and had the opportunity. He actually bought Bitcoin when it was $20 and then sold it at $250 thinking this has probably run its course and, and he made good money because he bought like a thousand of them. So he made great money. But yeah. he's, and he's like, but what if I had waited? <laughs> right? <laughs> you're at, right now, you're at $20 Bitcoin prices. Mm -hmm. This this thing's going to go up. Yeah. Don't wait. Seize the out. moment. For sure. Well, Atiba, thank you so much for being a guest. Uh, where can people reach out to you if they want to learn more about your dynamic Superman powers in the video marketing world? Um, <laughs> Thank you for that, Tori. Um, but honestly, guys, I, listen, I know I gave you a lot today and I know you, you probably have some questions. If you don't have questions, it's, it's because you, you didn't understand what I'm talking about or you, you fell asleep. You got to have questions. And I get that. And I want to answer your questions. OK, I want to answer your questions. So what I want you to do is go to meetatiba.com. That's meetatiba, A-T-I, B's and boy, A.com. That's my first name. When you do that, it's going to take you directly to my LinkedIn. Go to my LinkedIn and hit the connect button, not the follow button. Hit the connect button on my LinkedIn. Connect with me and then send me a message. And let's have a conversation human to human. Let's chat. I want to answer your questions. Well, thank you so much. I hope that everybody takes advantage of that and you know reaches out to Atiba because he is a wealth of knowledge. And I am honored to call you my friend and be connected with you. So uh, thank you for your time and I appreciate you being a guest on the show. Sorry, the pleasure is mine. And I am honored to call you my friend as well. Thank you for having me. Thanks so much for listening to the Creative Visionaries podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode, make sure you subscribe, leave us a review or share with a friend. Also make sure to visit us online at creativevisionariespodcast.com you can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn. And stay tuned for more episodes to come. And remember, it's time to tap into your true potential and unleash your inner visionary.